Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this new figure unboxing and review we're going to be looking at the Iron Factory Drill of Amducius. Hopefully I've pronounced that right but if I haven't anyway I'm probably going to be referring to him as Drillhorn because this is a third party's legend scale take on a generation one Leo Kaiser bot known as Drillhorn. So in this video we're going to have a look at the entire contents of the packaging. We're going to have a detailed look at him in both of his modes to help you decide how you want to display them. Uh, we're going to have a look at all the abundance of accessories that does come with him we're of course going to do some comparisons with the generation one original figure itself and we can see how we can use and utilize all of these accessories as well as doing a few other comparisons with some other figures so as you can see quite a bit to get through with this video so i'd like to remind anybody who's not subscribed to the channel if you'd like to hit that subscribe button for me now please because it really will help me out and the other thing is to remind you guys that you can order this from show z with the direct link in the description so to be honest, this is probably one of the main reasons that really twisted my arm into going into what I would say is third party collecting. I absolutely love the Okaiza. I love the Japanese continuity of figures. Um, and as I say, as soon as I saw this, this was probably the deal breaker, the one that twisted my arm, shall we say. So we've got the box here, which is great. This is some actual, of course, product images there. Uh, this is the way it comes packaged. It's lovely. We can see there that he's going to be uh, the left leg of Leo Kaiser. Not sure what they're going to be calling him exactly just yet. And there you can see we've got the alternate mode. And again, a multitude of ways that we can display and pose, which hopefully I'm going to cover all of these in this video. Uh, but again, if I do miss anything, hey, please do let me know in the comments because I'm learning the same as everybody else. So this is the box that it comes with. Uh, and then let me just show you what's inside. So you get, of course, your folded up um, instructions. You then get your bag of hands. You get two drill bits. You get your real breast master. You get your fake breast master. You get your Leo Kaiser leg. You get your spear. And then you get your huge, huge attachment, which is going to be the main uh, trident stroke spear for the main combiner. And the reason why I know that is because if you fold out the instructions, you can see there where it's showing you how you're going to build it all the way up. The instructions, to be honest, aren't too bad with these. They're pretty understandable, which um, is usually something that's quite unusual for a third party company. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Japanese continuity of Generation 1 figures, in 1989 in Japan, they were still going, making their own cartoons, and it was called Victory. So more people are more aware of this now due to Star Saber, Death Saurus, etc., all that sort of things. But this was their probably one of their best or most standout combiners the main combiner consisted of six figures and if i carefully just grab him now the reason why i'm saying carefully is because you'll notice that one of his legs is the old g is it is the gold gold plastic so i've got to be extremely careful and exactly as you can see there drill horn is still the uh, left leg so that is leo kaiser again which is the main body combiner well i say main there was him and dino king but this is obviously a little bit of a take of what the main one's going to look like but while this is here that's going to give me i suppose the perfect opportunity to just show you how big this is going to be because this is the third party leg um, i'm not going to be connecting this to it but it's quite simple to be honest i'm going to wait until we've got them all and do a full combining video but this the leg up to the hip is going up past um, the waist of the original figure so i'm expecting this to be a good few inches taller in all honesty right i need to carefully remove him a second and just lie him flat on the floor nice and carefully so this of course is the giant leg that comes with it you can see this full articulation in the foot there will be, there will be toe tilt ankle rock etc and there is a huge knee bend as well so that's enough of looking at that we're going to start off let's start off with the alternate mode to be fair because it's quite impressive looking um and i like the way that iron factory do sort of a different uh take with their figures what i mean by that is sometimes they make them a little bit more samurai or they go idw whereas with these they've gone pretty true to the original to be fair the thing that surprises me the most is just how much smaller it is compared to the original but they really have you know done a great homage to this particular figure now in alternate mode they're both super basic the original didn't really do much the treads didn't go round, um but the nose cone didn't either whereas with these the treads don't go round, but the nose cone actually will now you know, there's no real way on here that you can I suppose can store anything you can if you wanted to though you can put the fake uh, by, uh breast plate there which it does fit absolutely fine and i'm going to keep it on that one 
Um, but you've, there's also the breast force gimmick, which is brilliant. With regards, as I say, to the alternate mode, paint apps look good. This is a lovely gunmetal grey that's reflecting. This is obviously a nice silver, um, and it's nice. Oh, it's just popped out, clicked in. These are nice figures. Transformation isn't too difficult. I have uploaded a separate tutorial for you that you've probably seen already. Uh, but yeah, nice and not overly complicated and relatively straightforward. That's just reminding me. One thing I do need to make you aware of in both of these copies as I open them up, the head on the main bot was in fact off. It was just literally rot rattling around. Whether or not that's intentional, I don't know. It's just something I needed to let you know. So let's have a look at some of the accessories that come with him. There's some two little drills which can attach to the hands. I'm going to show you that Ooh, in a second. That again is the, I say fake breastplate, it's one of the ones you can use, but it's not made up of the Breastmaster. So this was the gimmick in 1989 in Japan. They'd gone past Headmasters, they'd gone past Godmasters, uh, Targetmasters, etc. They had these little figures, which did exactly that. These doubled up as a weapon, and they also double, um, doubled up as the actual breastplate of the original figure. So it would fit inside the chest. Now, I don't really want to forcefully push this if it's not going to go, but you get the idea um, that would fit inside there. Why is that not fitting? That's, I suppose, for me to worry about in another video. But that was the idea of exactly what they would do. And that's what I've got here set up ready. So I've already popped him in. You can disconnect him. Transformation process is, of course, super simple. Fold the head up and then, of course, just bring the legs down. Now, even for this tiny little uh, breast master, there's quite a lot of articulation on him, to be honest, considering how small he is. Uh, let's bring these around. So we've got what I would say articulation at the top. So they would be classed as the hips of the hind and the front legs. That needs to be folded up there. The head itself will look up and down. It is quite detailed, to be honest. And as you can see, the transformation was just literally folding it all up together. However, same as in the Generation 1 version, you could fold all these up as well. And then you could fold out what would be like a cannon, like so. And then you could pop that in his hands and he could wheel it around um, as exactly that. That way it's probably a bit better, to be fair, as an actual blaster. So the same thing can be done with this. Uh, you've just got to, again, position them all in the right way. So this would be the handle. This is the blaster that's folded out there. So you can, if you want to, wheel that as a blaster. But the best thing about this is because of how articulate this is and it can move around, they've put one of their own in again. So it's a bit like a faux one, a bit like the faux chest and the faux blaster. They're basically both static versions of this. That's probably the best way that I can describe it. Um, to be honest, for display purposes, I think it does look better with that on. There's nothing wrong with this. As you saw at the beginning of the video, it looks OK. It perhaps just protrudes out a little bit too much. But then, of course, you could also, uh, not with them hands because they're closed fists. Let's have a quick look at what else we've got before we have a look at the bag. So I say this is to make the huge trident stroke spear stroke, whatever it's going to be. And then we've got his own actual spear as well, which you can take. Yeah, you can take that off and I'm going to show you right now what we can do. So in this little bag, there is, as you come to expect, with loads of third party figures, an abundance of accessories. So we've got uh, two fists, which means they've got open hands so we can hold things. We've got a, I suppose, the best way, like a stop hands. who's holding his hand up to sort of stop people. Um, we've got... There is actually a swearing one. So there's that. That is a legit hand. That is not something that you can do uh, Sorry, by yourself. It is molded that particular way. And then you've got these little attachments as well. So let me show you what these do first and foremost. So of course, his name is Drillhorn. So let's show you him with his drill. So let's take the hands off. Very simple. Rotate this. Is it going to go in? There we go. Rotate that into there. Then carefully, now these are super fiddly, to be honest. Then you can attach that on there. You heard that click. And then if you wanted to, to be honest, you could stick the end of the spear on by the looks of it. Yep, you could. You could attach the end of the spear or you could take these and there is your drill hand. So, of course, you can do that for both. There is another one of these attachments. You can attach this in there. And then you just take his hand. I might as well do it, actually, while I'm talking. Take his hand off like so. Fold. In fact, let's attach this here. Might be a bit easier. And then fold it in. And there is Drillhorn with his drill hands.
Perfect. OK, let's have a look at the articulation on him. So the head will go all the way around, spin side to side, look up and down, completely unrestricted. The arms will come up to just about a full T. Oops, I've just knocked that off there. It doesn't make a difference. I'll keep it off for now. Um, they will spin around, but they are restricted by the treads on the back like so. There is a swivel at the top of the shoulder. There's a bicep flexion and there is obviously wrist swivel rotation because you can change the hands. There is a completely unrestricted waist swivel. There is a ab crunch as well. That is legitimate. That is built into it. If I move the arms out of the way, you can take them out to get the full splits. They can kick pretty far forward and pretty far back. Again, near enough the splits, they're just slightly hindered. You can see they're on ball and socket joints, as well as swivels at the top of the hips, as well as knee bends, ankle tilts, rock, everything. I mean, super, super articulated. This really, really is. Right, let's see if I can take this off without damaging any of my fingernails. I am... Oh. I'll have to, I'm going to find that in a minute. It's not too important for now. Let's see if I can get one of these fists, which um, has got an open hand. So we can, of course, put the all important. Where's my little screwdriver gone? That's better. It's a little torch screwdriver. It's going to help me with this. Um, yeah, so we can, of course, hold the spear. That is the wrong hand. That is no use. It needs to be the correct hand. And then let's clip this wow this is really kind of stiff as you can see it's a brand new toy it's not been forced in yet Whew, that took some doing that really did so you can then of course as i say there's your wrist rotation and if you wanted to you would then obviously slide this through there and then of course you can reattach this bit to the bottom now you can i've seen all manner of crazy poses with this and it does look really good um you probably just noticed yes there is empty forearm gaps and that is because that's where the fists fold in for the transformation so that is perhaps one of the only slight little negatives with regarding this but i'll be really quite surprised unless you're buying multiple displays if you're going to be keeping this in this mode i imagine that 90 percent of the people out there buying these are going to be fully combining them to be honest a um, bit of a bit of a comparison between this and the original. So original one's slightly bigger. What I'm going to do now, because there's so much going on here, I need to just clear off a bit of the thing so we can see, uh, do some more, I suppose, comparisons for you. So the only other Iron Factory figure I've got to hand is their take on a Mirage. Um, so scale's reasonable, shall we say. Let's bring in some other third party figures. Right, so I'll do third party first, then I'll do mainstream just to give you an idea. So we've got New Age, two New Age figures there. So this again is another third party company. Then we've got, where's Trailbreaker hiding? There he is, Trailbreaker's hiding there. You can see all these are sort of falling to, no, not falling to bits. They need standing oh, up properly. They also need me to not knock them over. That also helps. Uh, that is a Dr. Wu figure. So that's pretty much your uh, third parties. If you collect mainline. Oh, no, I didn't bring in this guy. There's a new age. That's, of course, a shattered glass Grimlock. Right. If we were going to do mainstream figures, let's do some G1 figures first. So Optimus Prime. Uh, mini bots so that gives you an idea of the scale of that with the alternate as well so the alternate mode is really small to be fair really small right for mainline figures uh let's bring in where's that core class prime there it is so usually i tend to find that they are exactly what these are with third party figures in between a deluxe and a core there you go. I'll bring in very quickly just a Voyager. Um, just again, just to give you an idea of the size. But as you can see, much, much smaller than them. But again, it's not to scale with these. That is just to give you an idea of his actual size. To be honest, guys, there's not much more to say about him. He's got, as I say, loads of accessories, loads of fists. There's multiple ways to display him. I love the fact, I suppose, of how versatile he is. And of course, I really love the fact and can't wait for the fact that he is going to be able to combine with uh, the rest of the breast force to make, uh, of course, Leo Kaiser. So 
there we go. Hopefully as well, I give you a little bit of um, information and background on where he came from and I suppose why they're, they're getting so popular now. It really is great, the Japanese continuity. I strongly recommend watching it. If you can either put up with the dubbed or just um, watch it with the subtitles. In the meantime, this was Iron Factory's Drill of Amdusius. That's a great name to be fair. This is, which is of course a third party legend scale take on Drillhorn. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And of course, pick me up if I missed anything out. Take care, guys.